This video is sponsored by AkiFlow, an all-in-one digital planner and calendar used to centralize tasks, schedule, and optimize your productivity. Learn more about how I'm using AkiFlow on my cybersecurity studies in a few moments. I've been hitting all of the influencer video trends lately, so here's what I would do differently if I could start over in cybersecurity. Now you can click off the video. I've been recently thinking a lot about cybersecurity careers. I guess, when do I not? And in this market, everyone has a journey. I've talked about mine, you've seen my journey, and uh, I wouldn't necessarily redo my journey as it's led me to where I am today. But if I had a few tidbits or anecdotes of advice, I would pass along to those who would be receptive to my unsolicited advice. Here's what I would do. Now, by no means am I an individual who has 10, 20 plus years of experience. I'm entering year four of being an industry. You know, I'm no industry veteran. My six anecdotes are tidbits of advice, starting out with the fundamentals of IT rather than just hopping into security. So I've mentioned this several times in the past. In fact, I have dedicated videos to just saying, learn the fundamentals of IT. It will reap many benefits. And really, the reasoning is you can't secure what you don't know. And I wish I would have started out with learning the fundamentals of IT, even including like hardware, computer networking, operating systems, memory management, cloud computing, and programming. My first introduction or conception of security was an operating system called Kali Linux. And I thought that security really was just about penetration testing or ethical hacking. Uh, pretty generic. I spent a lot of time focusing on the wrong areas of IT. In fact, I recall a video, my 1000 subscriber thank you, where there was a, a live comment talking about, I don't remember exactly, I think it was like a MAC address or TCP IP or something like that. And I honestly had no idea what they were talking about. And this was an individual who was already posting videos on how to get started in cybersecurity, which was a bit, well, you know how it is. So spend some time reading up on those fundamentals. I always recommend a good place to start is the CompTIA suite of certifications, A+, Network+, Plus, Security+. Plus. Uh, use each of those respective exam objectives as a guide to launch and start your own research. Don't necessarily have to take those certifications, but they offer a good foundation of those concepts. Next is explore opportunities or security domains. Because my interpretation of security was rather myopic, I didn't really realize how large security was until I got into my first internship. And it's really actually quite a big industry. And I've, again, talked about this a lot on this channel. When you're a student, the best time to learn and explore the different domains is then. It's, it's when I wish I would have known uh, about security and, and what you can do. There's all kinds of different things. There's a couple of reasons why I recommend exploring the domains. First is learning about the various domains uh, provides a, a perspective on how the various functions in security work together to make a cohesive, ideal security program. Knowing what matters within each of those security functions and why they are important is uh, beneficial for you. And then second is it provides learning opportunities. And it perhaps allows you to find an area that maybe you want to focus or specialize in if you're looking to go down that route. Um, but yeah, that's the two reasons. And I soon realized like, you know, I sucked at penetration testing and ethical hacking and that's okay because the domains or um, security is, is a big industry. Third is imposter syndrome. It's real and, and don't let it attempt not to let it eat you alive. Feelings of not being good enough, uh, not knowing enough, feeling like a fraud, or perhaps you're just a bit jaded or negative in this industry, they're all valid. I mean, you can see it in some of my videos. I feel this all the time. And you know, I wish I wouldn't spend so much time consumed by either comparing myself to others or negativity. And, and like I said, you can see that in videos and this is still a work in progress for me. Uh, you know, knowing that you don't know enough, that, that's okay. You're not alone in, and um, not everyone knows everything and just kind of trying to let that not eat you alive and just focus on what you're supposed to be doing. Eh, it's, it's decent advice. I should listen to this on my own advice here. Security as a hobby versus security as a career. So this is the one that I've actually learned recently, like in the last year. Security can be both a hobby and a career. And you're going to find individuals on both ends of that spectrum. Those who are there for just the paycheck and the paycheck loan. Here is a run out the clock situation. Which is totally fine. And those who could care less about a paycheck and are just really interested in an in-depth research. I participate in both ends of the spectrum. I wish I would have known to separate my hobby from my career identity. Um, for example, what you may like to do in your free time may not necessarily be what you exactly do in your career, and that's okay. Like I like to do different types of 
self side projects like home labs and teaching and stuff like that. Sometimes you can merge them. Sometimes you can't, and th- that's okay. So separating your hobby and career identity can actually help with your mental health. I've found because you face a lot of friction or frustration in your career because, well, you're dealing with people, and people are have differing opinions, and that's okay. And it's not always easy, but you know, as a hobby, you can just get into some really fun, in-depth projects, research, CTFs, whatever that may be. Uh, so this is something that I would recommend. Trying to distinguish or separate if if you can. Security as a hobby versus security as a career can be quite overwhelming in terms of how do you overall optimize your productivity. This is something I wish I would have known to do better. So for today's seamless transition into today's sponsor, AccuFlow. AccuFlow is basically an all-in-one central platform to help you optimize your schedule and communications. AccuFlow helps you organize and schedule your tasks all in one place. To do this, AccuFlow connects with Gmail, Slack, Google Calendar, Notion, Trello, and many more platforms so that you can pull all of your to-dos and meetings without jumping between platforms. The cool thing is you can quickly capture tasks with a simple command bar, then drag them into your calendar to time block your day. AccuFlow also has an AI integration that will help you auto assign your tasks to your various different projects helping you optimize your organization and the clarity that you need. Now, this may seem a bit confusing or perhaps a little bit overwhelming. And to help you, AccuFlow provides a dedicated one-on-one onboarding call with a team for every user who subscribes. This session really helped me capture my requirements and had an action plan for how I was going to use AccuFlow. For me personally, AccuFlow has been helpful in helping me organize my cybersecurity studies. I can organize things like researching tools, watching tutorials, recording and editing videos like these, and doing hands-on labs all in one platform. And it helps me keep track, especially when juggling multiple projects. It helps me uh, avoid getting overwhelmed when I can just see everything laid out visually. It also helps me without having to interface through various different platforms, Google Calendar, Notion, all of those different platforms that I use. So if you are interested in optimizing productivity, use the link in the description below uh, to learn more about AccuFlow and how it can help you today. Thanks to AccuFlow for sponsoring today's video. Next is the InfoSec community. Get involved. So the InfoSec community is awesome. A lot of unique, smart, and really cool people. And There's a lot of different people coming from all walks of lives. And actually, that's what I enjoy about this industry. You can meet like some very cool people. And I wish I would have known to get involved more in the industry, like especially when I was in university, like joining my local clubs or a CCDC team or conferences. And that's something that I'm still doing today, like trying to get involved in conferences. Um, But yeah, the, the... community is awesome and you can meet some really cool people collaborate on some fun projects and maybe one day it leads to an opportunity to work with some of your colleagues sixth is it's an incremental journey it's a cliche i know so you know basically take it one step at a time you know you're not gonna know everything and in fact i forget like half the things i learned within like one day um and and i realized that it's just an incremental journey Uh, i wish i would have known that you know just to take I guess some some sense of like just appreciation of where you're at in the step, even though you don't feel like maybe good enough, and just see it as more of an opportunity rather than you know like I don't know enough, I'm never going to be good enough type thing. It's an incremental journey, and you can see that on this channel, you can see it in others. It's basically what I've done on this YouTube channel. So uh, that concludes what I would have done differently if I would have started in security, but I don't necessarily like regret my past, if you know what I mean. So, I mean, it's led me to where I'm here today. So the influencer video trends, I recognize can be a bit cringy at times, but uh, yeah, what, what would you differently do differently in your career? Let me know in the comments section below and um, until the next time, have a good day.